Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Miso Glazed Black Cod. That's right, I'm going to show you my take on Nobu's famous fish dish. And I don't want you to make this because it's absolutely beautiful and incredibly delicious. I want you to make this because it's Robert De Niro's favorite. And how do I know that? I hear things. But also, I want you to make it because it's so unbelievably easy, as you're about to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a small pan, and into that I'm going to pour a couple tablespoons of water, and then a nice big spoon of white miso. And of course it's called white miso because it's gold. So I'm not quite sure why this is called white miso, but I do know that it is a fermented soybean paste and unbelievably delicious. We're also going to sweeten this up a little bit with some brown sugar, but not nearly as much as in most of the recipes you're going to see. All right, we're going to go a little closer to the authentic Japanese version and not make it too sweet. And after the sugar, we're going to go ahead and add some mirin, which apparently is a Swedish Japanese cooking wine. Although I don't believe the one I'm using has any alcohol in it. But a splash of mirin. And then last but not least, some sake, which is Japanese rice wine. So a splash of that. And at that point, we're going to go over to the stove and place this on medium heat. And we'll give that a stir as it warms up. And that miso paste will kind of dissolve. Although it doesn't ever really get smooth. I guess you can strain it if you want, but I never do. It doesn't seem to make any difference on the final product. But anyway, go ahead and whisk that up as smooth as you can. And what we want to do here is heat this until it starts bubbling. And then I'm just going to cook this for about a minute or two, just to slightly thicken it. And by the way, that's why we add the water, because I did want to cook this for a couple minutes to kind of meld everything together. And if you don't have the water, after a couple minutes, it might be too thick. But anyway, like I said, we're going to cook that for a couple minutes until it looks like this. And at that point, simply turn off the heat and let it cool completely. We don't want to put our hot glaze on our cold fish, so it's best if you go ahead and make this ahead of time. But anyway, let that cool down. And at that point, it's ready to go on our black cod. And there it is. We have two black cod fillets that I've laid down on lightly greased aluminum foil, also known as sable fish, also known as butterfish. And if you do end up making this, you'll know why. And I should point out, black cod doesn't come boned. It's always going to have this little ridge of pin bones that go right along there. Don't try to remove them. You'll tear up the fish. Those are super, super easy to pull out when this is cooked. You'll see. Okay, so ignore the bones for now. And at that point, we're going to go ahead and take our now cooled miso glaze and very liberally brush it all over. All right, we want complete coverage, including sides, fronts, backs, etc. And by the way, as I'm brushing this glaze on, I'm reminded no fish feels as sexy as black cod. I mean, I really can't explain that. It just has a beautiful feel. I mean, you can see how it's kind of quivering under that brush. It's very provocative. But anyway, we're going to brush that on thoroughly. And then what we're going to do is we're going to leave this out on the counter for about 15, 20 minutes at room temperature to give it sort of a quick marinade. Now, traditionally, this fish is left in the marinade for up to 24 hours, but I actually prefer the quick marinade better. So for me, this provides maximum miso enjoyment, but you decide. You are the Richard Blaze of your glaze. But anyway, to summarize, we're going to coat that very thoroughly, and we're going to leave it out for about 15 or 20 minutes before we broil it, which really is the secret to why this is so amazing. So we're going to head back over to the stove. We're going to preheat our broiler on high. And then here's a little trick I use. You see that cupcake pan? So my top rack's too high, my middle rack's too low, so by using a pan here, I'm going to get the perfect height. So anyway, that's my system, but you want to be about 7 or 8 inches under the heat. And all we're going to do is broil that for about 10 minutes until it's cooked through. And I do about halfway like to go in and turn the pan around. Generally, most home broilers are going to have hot spots, so I like to turn it so it cooks evenly. So that was after about 5 minutes. And then after the turn, I gave it 4 or 5 more minutes. And when I pulled it out, it looked like that, which I thought was super gorgeous. And you can see in this shot right here why I said not to tear up the fish trying to pull those bones out. When your fish is cooked through, those will pull out super easy. In fact, that's like a built-in doneness indicator. Thank you, Black Cod. All right, so right when this comes out of the broiler, before you put it on the plate, go ahead and pull out all those bones. So basically, the 8 to 10 minutes under the broiler is a pure guess. All right, you know the drill. You're going to check in these seams to see if it's flaking. If it flakes apart, you're ready. And I really push the envelope. I like to have mine just barely flaking, barely cooked. And another reason you're going to love this recipe, you don't have to let anything rest. Let's go ahead and pop that on the plate and eat. And as you can see, I serve mine super simply with some sugar snap peas I tossed with sesame oil. Just nice and light. I don't want anything competing or trying to outshine the fish. So I'm sorry, this is not going to go well on your Slim Jim fried rice. And as I go in for a bite here, you have to watch for the juices. Check this out. It's like a river. Have you ever seen a juicier piece of fish in your life? And don't even get me started on the flavor. It's just incredible. All right, a little bit sweet, a little bit tart. Just the right amount of that fermented funkiness from the miso. Just an absolutely brilliant combination of sauce and fish. And to you people that say you don't like fish, 
You don't like dry, fishy tasting, horribly prepared fish. You like this, trust me. Everybody likes this. So I really do hope you give that a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.